Hi, this is Lonnie Paxton, three-time Super Bowl champ with the New England Patriots. I'm a strategic advisor for three brands right now, and I'm on the game plan. So, Lonnie, um, you know, Jay and I always look at this stat. The average NFL career is like three and a half years or somewhere in that range, and you played in the league for, what, over almost 13 years, 13 seasons? 12, yeah, 12, 12 yeah, over, seasons. Oh, uh, got cut in August of my 12th year. Over 12 seasons. At what point in your career did you start to really seriously think about what you wanted to do off the field? Well, I mean, you know, I always kind of prided myself as a guy um, who built strong relationships, whether it was, um, you know, people out in the town of Boston, which is really easy to do when you're winning and you're going to places and, and everyone loves uh, the New England athlete uh, at that time, at least. Um, and, uh, and growing up in Southern California, I got a big taste of kind of the brand marketing side of things. Cause I grew up in Southern California where action sports was so huge and everyone has their brand loyalty to the sticker, to the product, to uh, these events that are hosted by various brand uh, managers and, and uh, you know, they collaborate with each other. So, you know, early on coming out of college, I, uh, I got introduced to Red Bull through just a, a coach of mine. Cause I was like, you know, Hey, have you heard this about this stuff that, you know, it gives you energy. You don't have to drink a ton of coffee. You just drink one of these things. I drink it before a football game. I was like, well, hook me up, you know? And he's like, well, they're three bucks a bottle. So I can't really uh, keep buying you this stuff. So, you know, I got to new England and uh, I'm like, Hey, you know, I kind of like that stuff. You know, now I got a couple bucks. And I, I don't mind buying it, but can you get me a deal? So I got introduced to the Red Bull guys my rookie year. And then the second year we start winning. So, you know, fast forward until like, Oh, six, Oh seven, you know, now Red Bull's flying me to events. I'm kind of like a brand ambassador. Um, I'm doing some speaking engagements for them. Um, they're dropping off cases upon cases upon cases, you know, to the locker room. So now I'm the guy in the locker with a Red Bull refrigerator and, and stickers everywhere. And, and uh, you know, Larry Izzo and Brewski and all these guys come and congregate Mike Vrabel and have a Red Bull before practice, pay the guys. You know, so long story short is, you know, it early on, it wasn't really a plan post-career. But it was, and I just didn't know it was shaping out that way. Is it fair to say as a long snapper, you maybe had more time to be able to do some of that stuff? For sure. I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot that, you know, goes into long snapping, but definitely the hours per day, I mean, you can only throw so many balls between your legs. You can only do it right so many times. Um, you try to help in other, in other ways. Um, but I was always kind of the guy who knows a guy. So, you know, while these other guys are busy, they're coming to me looking for, for swag or for the hookup at the hotel or for, you know, Hey, you can know this guy at this bar, or this restaurant. And, and, and I did have more time to do that stuff, but, but I also became the guy that, that wasn't turning a lot of things down because of it. So now I'm actually interacting with these people and becoming one of them. Whereas, you know, some of these other big celebs and athletes, um, you know, they're, they, they don't have the time or when they go out they're they're harassed too much. And it's almost like they become, you know, they're, they are the celebrity where I, I kind of uh, mix and mingled with the, with the everyday Joe, so to speak. Yeah. I'm sure you, it sounds like you provided that great uh, place for crossover because you were available to kind of like this impenetrable, you know, Patriot way type atmosphere, but you could, you could go both sides. Right. And then when I'd go home, um, I was one of the only guys in my town to, to make it, but it was full of action sports celebrities. So guys who are, you know, jumping 150 feet on their motorcycle or they're racing dunes and Glamis or they're, you know, uh, BMX jumping in the X games, whatever it may be. And they were getting a kick out of the fact that I'm the, I'm the team sports guy, you know, hey, that's the football guy, you know, and, and, and I'm getting a kick out of the fact that these are some of my heroes growing up as a, as an action sports fan. And, and so it was, I was able to bridge the gap with the, the, the community that, that I was playing in, but also bridge the gap to other industries when I would go home in, in the off season. Yeah. You know, one of the things that, that we hear a lot from guests that we've had on the show or just, you know, athletes that we've talked to is that finding that purpose post transition can be you know really difficult. And for a lot of guys, we've heard that like team routine and competition is something that you have in your life as a pro athlete for decades. And then suddenly you retire and it's just not there anymore. So was that something that you found to be true for you? And if so, how did you find yourself filling those pillars of, of team routine and competition? 
Well, you know, I, I was very fortunate that um, the year that I got released, uh, I had earlier in the year, we had some, we had some complications with my twins. And so I, I, my wife went into premature labor. My last game, my last uh, actual game was against uh, the Steelers when I was playing for the Broncos and Tebow to Demarius Thomas, one play in the yeah. in overtime and, you know, the fastest game in overtime. And I was at that game. Ironic, you were that thing freezing. Wow. Yeah, I was in the upper yeah, deck, freezing. just ice wind in my face. But you're yeah, playing in well, it. <laughs> and so was and so was my wife, who was 23 weeks pregnant at the time. You know, and she's you know in the stands jumping around, going crazy. And um, ironically, we go, we win, and we're going to go play the Patriots the next week, my former team. <clears throat> and uh, she goes into premature labor, and we have to rush to the hospital while I'm at practice. And they're saying, you know, it's 50 50 chance that the kid, you know, your son on the bottom won't make it you know, if we don't really put her on bed rest and take precautions. So right there, you know, life kind of hit me. Um, and I was already kind of feeling like, Hey, I'm, I'm towards the end of my career. It's there's, there's definitely some, some things I need to start thinking about. And I'd already made some good relationships with GoPro, who was a very early company who actually was from the Red Bull connection from my early days, that guy became the vice president of GoPro. So I was already kind of putting feelers out there and inviting them to games and talking about post-career stuff and uh thankfully we had my twins and and they were all right but that season i just kind of lost interest in like in 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 football I mean, you know i felt like i was spending too much time just snapping and being away from them and not enough time at home you know being hands-on with newborn twins and so you know a younger guy came in and and, and they ended up cutting me but literally the the day i got cut i called him uh at gopro and said hey <clears throat> you know I know you, you don't have to give me a job, but I just, I just want to talk to the right people. Um, I got some ideas on how I think I can help you guys. And uh, comes, come September, I get a trial with the Redskins and uh, flew all the way out there. Almost hoped that I didn't get the job, which is kind of weird um, because I was kind of focused on post-career and I was already talking to GoPro. And then the day that my contract for GoPro came through, literally within hours, the Chargers call and say, hey, we need you for the last three games of the season because Mike went, broke his arm. <clears throat> And I had to make that pivotal decision to say, no, I'm actually finished and I want to get into this GoPro thing. And, uh, you know, how would that have worked if, if, if I, you know, fought and fought and fought and GoPro said, oh, wait, you, you were all into us and now you want to go play some more football and, you know, and they would probably hire another guy and my life would have been completely changed. So I had to make that decision um, immediately. So I didn't have time to, to really get down on myself about the transition it was like immediately into the corporate world oh now I got to compete and I got to win every day and I have to be on it to show that I'm not just the athlete the meathead you know that maybe everyone expected but I can add value and, and provide uh you know this vertical some some real uh you know team sports attitude yeah no, that, that's that's really exciting and I I'm, I'm excited to dig into into GoPro you know as a technology, it was such a novel and interesting thing. And I'm sure you saw it develop in really interesting ways. What excited you about the product? Like, what was it that you were looking, you know, th that excited you about GoPro? And then what were some of the cool ways that you got to share the product with, you know, some of the folks that you were, you were signing? I mean, it was the immersive experience, you know, it brought the fan closer than they'd ever been before, you know, and, and, and traditionally a GoPro, you're on a motorcycle, you're on a surfer. Um, you're skiing, you know, big jumps in the Alps. But my idea or the idea for the vertical was to, you know, place those things on quarterbacks and umpires and referees and, and um, you know, get, get real crazy and put it in a ball just for that one little moment. I mean, I did a deal with the NHL and we, we built this thing that looked like it was part of the puck. And we just kind of filmed it. And it, for that split second that the viewer catches that content, they think, wow, how did they put the GoPro on the puck? But we didn't. We fabricated like the idea and, and made, you know, movie magic, so to speak. So I was, <clears throat> you know, super intrigued on, on how immersive it could take the viewer, but also the community side of GoPro. Like it's, it's aspirational to go shoot these pieces of content. And then the viewer at home is like, oh, I want to go try that. And so you would see some of the craziest ideas of just the normal people wanting to copy that piece of content. And then we kind of hit at the perfect time of social media and content and amplification of it and and uh, community sharing and so it was a really you know fun rocket ship to be on back in 
2012, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, it absolutely was a rocket ship. It was a blue chip stock. Uh, everybody would, was buying a GoPro. Help us understand your perspective a bit, you know, having gone through that, but then continuing with the company. GoPro is still a successful company, makes incredible products, but really there was a true heyday of the company, which you were a key part, integral part of building up. Um, take us through kind of that, that up and down a little bit and what that was like from your perspective. Yeah. You know, I, I, I pride myself on, on these, on these people who gave me opportunities, you know, Sac state gave me that first opportunity to go play college football. I took it. I didn't look past them. Patriots gave me the first opportunity out of, out of college. I took it, didn't look past, and it was a great decision. Same thing with GoPro. They gave me this opportunity and I was going to do everything I could to make the most out of it. And I came in at a time when all I knew was football was, you know, the owner tells you this, the head coach tells you that the assistant coaches break it down and the players go play. <clears throat> and it's not really so much in corporate world like that. You know, you kind of have these meetings upon meetings upon meetings and then ideas. And then, and then, you know, whoever's sitting at the top, their idea might be not as good, but it's their idea and they make decisions and they say, go do this. And so I think there was a lot of really good stuff that happened at GoPro. There was maybe some bright, shiny objects along the way that like, you know, kind of stole uh, resources and bandwidth from people because everyone was going a million miles a minute and um, would lose track of some things because the next big thing is here, next big thing, the next opportunity. So you could really see that kind of happening um, along the way. But we had a really good lifestyle team who had athletes crushing it for us, global partnerships. Um, and my role went from team sports, which, like I said, no one really knew what could be in team sports, but then kind of progressed and, and evolved into team sports and entertainment, which you know, being able to work with entertainers like Zac Efron and Derek Huff and, and uh, global celebrities. Like I had guys in Brazil, with 50 million followers and, and, and uh, a guy in, uh, in, in uh, India, who's got 25, he's on MTV, he rides motorcycles and he does cool shit with his GoPro. Um, so just kind of seeing that progress and we, we kind of, we were on that rocket ship and maybe along the way hit a couple of hurdles and pivots, but all good learning experiences and, and it's stuff that I kind of take with me today. And it's like my advice now to some of these startups I'm involved in. Yeah, you mentioned some of the differences between your perspective as a pro athlete and then what you experienced having to be in a boardroom setting. I'm sure there's plenty of, of a fun learning curve on getting up to speed on email and all of the internal politics. Man. Yeah, Jeez. Exactly. <laughs> my first day I hit reply all like to the entire company. I, you know, I locked myself out of my computer and then I hit reply all literally within 24 hours. I'm like, uh, do I even know how to do this? Rookie moves. <laughs> Rookie moves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But all that being uh, said, you know, having spent nine seasons with the Patriots and then seven and a half years with GoPro, like were there any similarities for, for two successful you know, companies essentially? What were some of the similar things that maybe you could point at and say, Oh, that explains, or th that's one thing I can point at that, that explains the success. Yeah. I mean, GoPro kind of just became synonymous with that point of view angle, you know, and like at the Patriots, you had the Patriot way and do your job and GoPro had this just feeling of exclusivity because it was so the content was so high quality and the product was so high quality and you're doing these amazing things with this little movie camera that fits in your hands that, you know, is, Four hundred, five hundred dollars, and people are paying tens of thousands of dollars for these things, um, and we're doing very similar things. And we're able to build them into hats and 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 helmets and balls and and equipment and stuff. Um, but it kind of had this, you know, just this this unique look and feel about it that was only GoPro. And so, you know, very similar to what the Patriots like. Our brand of football was the Patriot way, and include everybody and do your job and the tough wins we're going to squeak out and um and no one says oh that was all my you know that, that that was all me it's kind of when you lose it's all my fault when you win you point at all your buddies and say they all did a good job so you know we had kind of a lot of that internally at gopro yeah and then talking about some of the startups that uh you've mentioned you're now working with and bringing some of your learnings to working with them Give us a little sense of, of what you've been up to with them and kind of where your role fits in as, as an advisor with some of these startups. Yeah. So, you know, advisory consulting, it's all new to me. So I'm kind of working on the, 
you know, at the, on the seat of my pants here, but, um, you know, I, I, uh, there's some really good brands that, that I've, I've come to really believe in and, and it, and there's three of them right now. So one of them, um, is called kind humans. And we have this saying kindness, pass it on, which is, you know, so, so relevant right now with the times we're in. And, um, and so my role with them is, is, you know, bringing people into the fold, whether it's celebrities, athletes to kind of, you know, uh, evangelize the message, um, get the brand out there. But the purpose of the, of kind humans is to, uh, create a, a marketplace for good. And so we have like a marketplace where you, you can go and you know where the goods came from, you know, if they were sustainably sourced, um, you know, they're good for the planet, for yourself and, and, um, for the communities. And so we kind of have a cause community content strategy. Um, so that's been really fun. And actually that was started by number four at GoPro. So a guy who actually was part of that small team that took this company to a billion dollar brand, um, you know, came and, and broke away after the IPO and, and him and his wife co-founded Kind Humans. So we're down here in, uh, in San Diego and I got a big family van with giant logos on the side and I cruise it around every day. And my kids just love being Kind Humans. So it's really fun flying the flag. Um, the second one is called PowerDot and they're a mobile electric STEM device. And so st TENS units and STEM devices are not a new technology, but what PowerDot's done is put it in your pocket. So now it's all controlled by the app. It's a piece of technology that athletes and anyone who goes to a physical therapy um, center, which none of them want to do now because of COVID, they're tuning in to, to uh, PowerDot and, and figuring out that this thing can go with you in the car and travel and, and on your couch. And, and, um, and there's, it's a smart application. So it feeds you these notifications. It kind of knows what, what you did throughout the day, your physical exertion or your pain levels. And, and, uh, and we've been kicking butt with that. So, you know, a lot of the introductions I'm in charge of as NFL players or, uh, you know, training facilities, um, brand integrations. And so that's been, been really fun. <clears throat> and those guys are all here local here in uh, San Diego as well. Um, and the third one is, a, is a direct consumer wine company. So, you know, it's kind of, you have your, your philanthropic kind humans, you have your technology space power dot, and then you have your just, you know, your COVID recession proof direct to consumer alcohol business. Um, but there, the, the, the really cool part about knocking point is that it's, it's, well, it's celebrity owned. So Stephen Amell is a co-founder who's, he's big on the show arrow and he's a big actor in LA. And, uh, my buddy, Andrew Harding is the other founder, <clears throat> um, former MTV executive. And we're collaborating with, with, uh, celebrities to curate their own wine. They call it what they want. They get to pick the taste and then we sell it online to our shops and our members. And, and uh, we've, we've had a really successful year. We did a wine with Ashton Kutcher called Quarantine that, um, you know, we were able to donate a million dollars in the month of April to COVID relief because we sold 120,000 bottles of wine in a month, you know? Um, so we're doing some really cool brand collaborations with them, celebrity collaborations. And we just signed our first um, professional sports team, the Cleveland Cavaliers. So now we're, We've uh, trademarked the official wine of sports, and um, and and we got team partnerships uh, in our future. I, I love that. I know they dig their beer in Ohio, but I guess you're going to turn them all into wine drinkers, which is uh, which is exciting. Uh, you That's know, I, right. I will yeah. say, Tim Tim knows this. I love this topic because one of the things that we talk about a lot is what celebrities and athletes bring to, especially consumer brands today. Right? It's hard to get a quality signal on a new product that launches, but then you see your favorite athlete or your favorite celebrity come to the product and say, hey, I'm, I'm getting behind this, I believe in this, and now suddenly it, it breaks through the consciousness. What have you found to be sort of the most compelling way that you can bring celebrities to these products or athletes to these products in a way that like still feels organic, but, but is still valuable to the company? Yeah, I mean, they, they, we dealt with this a lot at GoPro because for years we were fighting with um, your phone, you know, phone versus GoPro. Why should, why am I fighting for pocket space with your phone and people don't want to carry these things around? Um, you know, I got a great photo of Wes Welker who I sent him a bunch of GoPro stuff and he put a, a, a an attachment that was built for a, a kid's chest. It was a junior chesty, but he put it on his head and he sent me a picture and he's like, okay, GoPro, what now? You know? And so it was like this education side, but over the years, the content spoke to them. These cool partnerships kind of spoke to them. A lot of product seeding 
and simple asks of, hey, turn this on yourself and go shoot with your kids. And, you know, so, you know, my network globally expanded for that reason. And there's a there's kind of some proof that that goes of, along with it that, hey, look at some of the cool things I did with ex celebrities or athletes or brands. Um, so they're kind of interested in what I got cooking now. And so, you know, my kind of checklist when I get involved uh, with these brands is, is, is it authentic to me? And this is, is this something that I can, you know, evangelize and speak highly of? Um, Cause you know, you don't want to just, excuse my French, throw shit at the wall and see what sticks. You kind of want to have, you know, a cool factor about it and, and something new to the market. And so that's why like, you know, kind humans power dot knocking point is, you know, there's, there's, there's a cool factor to having your own wine. There's a, there's a cool, there's a, there's a, a, a coolness to be able to take care of yourself, uh, you know, remotely and not go into these physical therapy zones and, and, and treatment centers and whatnot. And, and there's a cool factor to being kind to yourself and the earth and, and, and passing on kindness right now. So you got to have a little bit of that for sure. Um, a lot of it comes with seeding products. So having that promo budget to, to see if they like it, you know, I'd say eight out of 10 times they get it and they're like, Oh, well, thanks, but no thanks. But, you know, those, some of the chances you take and, you know, it'd be funny. I mean, the more money you have, the more free stuff you want. So, you know, I'm always the guy who has uh, some of the latest and greatest gadgets. And so they kind of trust me um, when I'm sending them stuff. And, and a lot of times it's not asking for anything in return. It's just, you know, Hey, test this out, feel it, like it, don't like it, but let me know what you think. Yeah, no. And, and I, I think it makes a lot of sense, especially because we're seeing so many athletes and celebrities getting excited about tech startups today that there's just a curiosity, which I think obviously you mm. being able to send products sort of feeds the curiosity. But I guess there's also like a, a learning curve, right? And, and we hear it on the show a lot with our guests that are just retiring, just getting into, you know, venture or technology. How do you help the, the celebrities or the talent that you're working with understand like, hey, what does it actually mean to work with a startup and like all the things that you kind of have to do if you're going to be on board with, with somebody like that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's having you know, the willingness to, to learn. And, um, you know, I, I didn't get into marketing think, thinking I was going into marketing. I, I kind of got into GoPro thinking that, you know, I had some cool ideas and, and I think these cameras can go on, you know, certain places. And I really didn't know what, like we spoke about earlier, like PowerPoints and, and, and uh, you know, Word docs and, and things of that nature, but those are things you pick up along the way and how to present it and really believe in it. And, you know, for me, it's, it's, um, it's doing a lot of listening and not acting like I have the answer. Um, you know, I definitely am not an expert in being an entrepreneur. Um, but what I can bring to the table is, is, uh, you're going to get, you know, I'm guaranteeing you're going to get a work, work ethic out of me. You're going to get, you know, a network of my closest, smartest friends who, you know, if I, if I have some questions, they can help guide me and, and, uh, mentor me. Um, but you're also going to get, um, you know, someone, if I do believe in this and I, and I am, uh, you know, bought in that I'm wholeheartedly, you know, gonna, gonna express that to my entire circle of people. So, um, it is tricky leaving the league and, 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 and feeling like you can start something up and not feeling like, Hey, these guys just want to come after me for my name and my money and then not have a plan behind it. Um, so it's picking and choosing the right circles of people to get involved in the right products and, and understanding the market. You must feel pretty empowered now though, having the dual experience almost for, I mean, not quite as many years now in the kind of corporate world, but having done that and been with a company that went public and um, is a household name, like, you must feel, you know, like, like you come from a position of just so much value you can add having that and, you know, the athlete piece as well. Yeah. I mean, I, you would think so, but I still have my self doubts, you know, I, I, when I was leaving, uh, I got laid off at GoPro in April and, you know, the world was caving in and, and four kids looking at me like what, you know, what's next. I still haven't told them. They still think I work at GoPro, but, um, I just have other people who pay me money too. So, uh, but you know, writing that resume was tricky. Like it, it, I hadn't had to do it for a while. I hadn't had to go hunting for a while and I wasn't complacent, but I hadn't really had to put, you know, forth that time. So what I'd just been doing over my GoPro career is just jotting down wins. You know, every, if I, 
if we sign an NHL deal or I got a free deal of Monday Night Football or I, I got this person to post this or I, I went to Europe and, and, uh, and shot with a, a celebrity couple. Like I just jotting down the wins and then maybe some, some like return that we got from it. Um, I mean, I remember my NHL deal I, I did for, for pennies on the dollar and on our, on our, our announcement date, we got a billion impressions through uh, in 24 hours through all the media and it wasn't, it was, it wasn't paid for. So the little things like that, that I can just start to say, Oh, wow. I, I do have a pretty good body of work in the corporate sense. And obviously the football side should, you know, speaks for itself, you know, and, and, uh, I think I got something good here, you know, and I got my, the guys in these startups telling me like, wow, you got a you know, great background. You're doing a great job. But as the Patriots and the football and, and like, I'm, my position as a long snapper, I'm only as good as my last snap. So I sit there and dwell on all these things that I've done. I'm missing things right in front of me. So like, I've always just been that way um, to not sit there and kind of, uh, uh, you know, enjoy the moment. It's like on to the next moment. And so with these opportunities that you're putting time in the advisories you told us about, do you see that you'll continue to want to stay in an advisory role? And I know it's early with all of these companies, or do you have a hope and intention to maybe become much more of an operator and really sink your teeth in with one of these or even, you know, your own company or another company? Yeah. I mean, a couple of the companies are, um, you know, they, they have some strategies in the next three to five years that, that could be very, um, you know, fruitful for everyone involved. And so, um, learning about that process too, like, is it an exit? Is it an acquisition? Is it, um, a, a, you know, a, a, a partnership that, you know, turns into something bigger. Um, I'm kind of riding the wave right now to see where I want to fit. I, I do like the kind of three pronged approach that I've put together unknowingly. Um, but, you know, at some point they're all going to want maybe a little bit more time. Um, and so I've got to make that decision. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to actually talk to my wife about that recently. I'm just like finding what I'm good at with each brand and each, in each startup and, and maybe focusing on that rather than taking on a bigger role and, and managing this big, huge, you know, group of people. Um, but, but I've been thinking about that a lot. And uh, I mean, I like, Right now, I'm, I'm, I'm working less time and, and uh, m making a little bit more than I was. So it's, it's, it's not a bad thing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the, the really interesting things, and, and I, I appreciated so much as you were, you know, I guess sharing your, your thought process as you're going through this journey, is you talking about that idea of like finding what you were good at and then having that intersect with something you enjoyed doing, right? So as we think about, um, you know, where Tim and I usually like to sort of close the conversation, but I'll jump into it a little bit early is advice that you would have given your younger self in helping to figure out that combination of what you were good at and, and what you enjoy doing. If you think about your younger self or even giving advice to like young athletes today that are thinking about that, you know, what are some ways that people can, can find that intersection? Yeah. I mean, it, it to, to me, it was, it was um, opening myself up to maybe some not uncomfortable positions, but, but, I looked at some of these uh, freebies, so to speak, back in the day when I was playing, you know, a lot of, not a lot of guys will do these, uh, you know, free appearances or events or things like that. And, and what I found with me saying, yeah, I'll go do that at some random coffee shop or I'll go support a children's hospital event and, you know, dress in some funny clothes and walk down the, you know, the catwalk uh, for charity. A lot of guys would turn those things down, not because they didn't appreciate them, but because, they have a market value and their, you know, time a is money, but B they might be getting paid a hundred grand to do this. And why would I do the thing for free? So I was someone who always kind of took those freebies and honestly didn't have a ton of paid things. Um, but throughout this journey, I found that those networking opportunities and those corporate settings of, you know, kind of putting yourself out there and, and answering the, the question you've been asked 20 times, but still answering it like you give a shit, um, built a lot of strong relationships and a lot of things, uh, a lot of uh, rapport with, with business leaders and community members and entrepreneurs that, um, that keep me in mind for the opportunities. They're always reaching out for me, out to me for, Hey, do you, would you want to get involved in this? Or you want to, um, uh, you know, go to this event or, or be a part of this group or this advisory board. 
um, today. So the younger self was just doing it out of the goodness of my heart, but the, the older self was saying, that's a really good strategy and more people should do that. And so um, that's just in my nature. I didn't know I was actually doing it that way, but um, that's kind of what I tell guys when I talk to them on the phone or, or you know, got, you know, I've had about 10 or 15 guys recently call me saying, you know, they're, they're close to the end. How did I, how, how did I do it? You know, and I would just say, you know, follow up with a lot of those people. You know, you give that business card, you got a stack of 20, send them a text or an email or, or a note the next day. I said, hey, thanks. Nice to meet you. Even if you don't remember who they were, um, just maybe give them a little shout out because um, that, that definitely helps. And so, you know, uh, my younger self definitely burned the candle at both ends sometimes, but <laughs> I had fun and, and uh, I, uh, I've, I have a lot of good memories for it. And I got a beautiful family and, and uh, no, no complaints. Yeah. I mean, like anything else, it's the role, the importance of preparation. And so maybe you didn't realize it at the time when you were doing all this stuff or with GoPro started working with them, but you were preparing something, you were laying the foundation for something to do after your career. Um, and I think it's a pretty powerful story. So we're really thankful that you joined us, Lonnie. Uh, it's been great to hear your story and we wish you the best, uh, in these advisory roles and, uh, to you and your family as well. Thank you guys. Yeah, it's been fun. Um, brings up a lot of good memories. So thank you. Yeah, that's funny. My wife was, uh, she was in the movie, the game plan as an extra with the rock. And I told Are you her kidding I me? Yes. Yeah. That is yeah. amazing. They, uh, oh, she was wow. a Patriots, she was a Patriots cheerleader and they were like, Hey, we need three or four chicks to go to the club tonight to get in this scene. <laughs> and she was like 19 or 20 at the time. It was pretty funny. That's funny. Can she help us get the URL? Cause I think that movie is still squatting on the game plan.com. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Uh, maybe. maybe she owns it. <laughs> yeah.